Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Flick of Faith. This is a new flicking area control game from Awaken Realms Light, and it is exactly what I just said. It is a flicking dexterity game in which area control is employed. You're gonna score points. Whoever has the most points at the end of four rounds is the winner. Let's go ahead and get down to the table. I'll show you how it works and we'll come back with some final thoughts after that. Let's hit it. So here I have a four player game of Flick of Faith set up for you. Now, Flick of Faith is an, a flicking area control game where you're going to be taking pieces from your cloud bank here, whatever corner you are at, this one would be mine, and you're going to be placing your profits onto this cloud bank, anywhere in this cloud bank, and you're going to try to uh, gain area control on these different places that are out on the board. That would be a bad shot. Uh, you're trying to get it onto these islands or onto the city space somewhere so that you can put out one of your temples on that island uh, uh, so that you can have a presence there. Now, there are spe special powers that each of the different gods has. For example, Dagda over here has the hand of God and he can use this in a couple of different ways. He can either use it to uh, flick his people out there onto the board, or he can use it as a backstop. So he can put it over here like this, so it's not touching any other pieces, only the board. And then, <laughs> and then he can use it to as a backstop and possibly uh, have a better opportunity of getting on to where he was uh, trying to go. So that's Dagda's ability. Ra over here gives you a larger uh, profit token. It's called a Sphinx. Um, uh, Themis over here is uh, says that you can resolve uh, a tie in the council phase. Usually ties, uh, nothing happens, but you can break a tie in your favor. Uh, Freya over here has this uh, heart token that if there are a couple of different uh, tokens out here and you're tied, then uh, she can take this heart token uh, a couple centimeters above the board and drop it. And as long as it rests upon one of her tokens and somebody else's, that counts as her token for uh, majority and that type of thing for that island, for domination. There are four other gods on, on the other sides of these things. For example, Morrigan wants to flick people off the, the board because uh, if she can get two people on her card that she's flicked off the board, then she'll score some extra points. Uh, over here on the backside of Ra is Anubis. Anubis says that each generation, the first time one of your profits goes to the reserve pit uh, or pool, you flick that profit after the active player's turn. So your guys are able to stay on the board a little bit better with Anubis. Uh, over here on the backside of Themis, Themis is Zeus. Zeus says when building a temple, you may choose an island, any island you want. So that's an interesting thing there for uh, Zeus. And then over here on the other side of Freya, we have uh, tier and tier says you may flick the profit, uh, your profit with your weaker hand, so your your non-dominant hand. If you do, and that profit lands on an island, flick that profit a second time using the same hand. So you can choose which kind of play style fits you best uh, from the eight gods that are available. Now each round or generation is what they call it, uh, is split up into three different phases. The first phase is a council phase where you're going to be taking this deck of cards and this deck of cards contains different laws that can uh, change how scoring happens during the worship phase. And so what you'll do during the council phase is that you'll choose two cards, one higher and one lower, and then everybody is going to put their, uh, their hands out here on the table uh, where it is perpendicular to the table, and then you're gonna go three, two, one, and choose up or down. If you choose up, you'll choose this card. If you're choosing down, you'll choose this card. And everybody will uh, vote on which one of these cards is going to go into effect. For example, this one says borderless faith. Uh, until the end of the game, if a prophet touches a border on the island, city, naval, uh, it, it is outside that island, city, naval. So more often than not, 
if you touch a border, you're considered to be on the island. But if you're touching a border, if this is in effect, you're considered to be off the island. The Red Sea down here says also until the end of the game, every worship phase, the player with the most profits on the C gets three points. So for the uh, for the duration of the game, everybody who has the most uh, profits out here in the ocean part or the sea part of the thing, in other words, not on an island like so, they're going to get three points at the end uh, during the worship phase. So these are all scoring cards, and these are the two things that are going to be done. They're either going to stick around, or they're just going to happen for one mission phase and then go away. During the mission phase, everybody's going to be taking uh, one of their profits. A person will be chosen to go first, and they will be given the first player token, like shown right here. And uh, they're basically going to start by taking one of their profits here and flicking it out onto the board so that they have presence on the board. Uh, now the second player gets to go, and they're going to place their person somewhere out here as well. And... All right, well, that's not good at all. This person will do the same thing, and they let's say they want to go over here like this, um, and then this person will do the same. Uh, they want to do something like that. All right, so now everybody has gone through uh, the first round. The mission phase will continue until everybody has used all five of their profits, and that will be the end of the mission phase. Now, during the mission phase, if you hit onto one of these uh, city circles, you're able to put out one of your uh, temples anywhere on this table, removing this person to the reserve pool. You can put it right here on the city, or you can put it anywhere else on the island, but it has to be inside that border. If one of your profits gets out here and scores the navel, uh, you don't have to be directly inside of it. You can just be touching it like this. Uh, you can remove this guy and get one point for the person who hit the navel, and then you'll also get plus one point for each island that you have presence on already when that occurs. So that's called scoring the navel. So now ever, after everybody has uh, flicked all five of their profits, we move on to the worship phase where we're going to score victory points based upon the presence and domination of each of the different islands. islands. So each of the people who have presence on the island, remembering here that borderless faith here uh, was the one that was voted uh, into existence in the council phase. And it says that if you're touching the border of an island, you're considered off the island. All right, so the only one that's happening here is this one is considered off the island, so we'll just go ahead and move it off like that. Then this one right here is touching the border, so that's considered off the island as well. Uh, everything else seems to be well within the uh, border lines of each of the islands, so we're good to go. So starting with this one, uh, let's say that, uh, well, we'll start with Dagda here, the green player. He has presents one, two, three, so he's going to get three points uh, for... Uh, presence on the island. And then Ra over here has presence here and here, so he gets two points, uh, like so. And then over here, Themis has presence one, two as well. So we get that. And Freya over there has presence on one, two islands as well. So there we go for that. Now we score for domination. And domination simply means that you have more than any other player that is on the island. So for example, there are one, two here to two. Nobody has domination there. Over here, it's one to one. Nobody has domination. If this had counted, they yellow, raw, would have domination. But since that is in play, it doesn't count. Over here, uh, Themis definitely has domination, and they will score an extra two points for having domination on that island, and that's the only one they have domination on over here. This island is not dominated by anybody because they're tied, so we only had one island score for domination that turn. After we're done scoring the worship phase, the first player token will move to the next person in clockwise order, then all of the profits come back. Um, these profits will come back as well from the uh, reserve pool. The temples will actually stay on the islands. So temples give you a lasting presence on islands, whereas profits will be flicked out. And then at the end of the generation, they'll actually come back. And then once everybody has removed all of their profits, 
left their temples out there. We'll start another generation. At the end of four generations, whoever has the most points is the winner. So that's about that for Flake of Faith. There isn't a whole lot going on. The rules are simple, super simple. And uh, of course, you're going to have to rely upon your dexterity for the most part in, in controlling how you're going to flick those little profits across the board and score the most points. You also have to kind of uh, adjust your play depending upon what law or council cards come up, which could change scoring from time to time. So you have to keep an eye on that and adjust your play. I do enjoy this game a lot. I'm not that great at it, but as flicking games go, this is probably up there near the top uh, because of its simplicity and because of how fun it is. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get to my pros and cons. My first pro is the component quality of the game. Uh, all of the cards are, are well produced, good card stock. The board isn't actually a board. It is a, a neoprene mat with stitching around the edge. The colors pop on this thing it is colored so well the artwork is great it's uh you know not incredibly detailed or ultra realistic or anything like that but it definitely gives you the uh, light-hearted feel that comes with the game you know the gods are all very powerful but they're also bored so they're just trying to uh play this game here so it's it, everything about the game works well even the box you know the box is this strange shape but that's okay because it does hold it's not overproduced it holds the neoprene mat in there and then there's just enough room for all of the other components to go on the other side as well so i like the size of the box even though it's an abnormal size and i'm considering that part of the components of the game because you have to store it in the box and it stores the game well with no excess so everything as far as the components are concerned is is well done, well thought out, not overproduced, but still very useful. My second pro of the game is the artwork specifically, because the artwork, I've always said games that look good are more fun to play, and that's exactly true with this. Now, I will say that the artwork on the components, they're stickers, and I'm not a big fan of stickers. I wish something else could have been employed, but I get it, it's a flicking game, you have to use these certain kind of pieces and so forth that have to have stickers put on them. I get it, I, I don't like it, but I understand it. Uh, but the artwork is great, and that's one of the pros that I'm wanting to bring up here. It looks good, it pops on the table, and because of that, other people are going to want to see what it is and going to want to see what's going on and they're going to be drawn to it. My third pro of the game is the fact that the gameplay is strategic and tactical with a little smidge of take that in there. Now, with a lot of flipping, flicking games, it, it feels really take that-ish because you can knock people's pieces off the boards and stuff like that. The thing with this is that it's not necessarily advantageous to do that. You really want to try to accomplish your own goal using your own God's ability to its uh, uh, best extent. Uh, so that may or may not be. There are some gods out there that benefit from knocking people off the board. And if you're playing with that specific power, then yeah, you're going to be doing that. But otherwise, you're going to want to try to get um, your uh, strategy going, not necessarily mess with somebody else's. Now, it's going to happen, don't get me wrong, uh, and, you know, the wayward flick is going to happen and, and it's going to knock pieces all over the place, but that's not necessarily the point of the game, so the take that is there. I'm not going to lie about that. It's definitely there, but I don't think it is the uh, dominant feeling that the game gives. Uh, it's definitely a, a strategic, tactical type of game where you are trying to flick your pieces in such a way that scores you the most points. Sometimes that will involve knocking other people out of the way, but for the most part, I think, at least the feeling that I've had with it, the experience that I've had with it, it's not about that. It's more about how am I going to be able to score the most points 
on my own. So that is great. I like the gameplay. It's very fun, very enjoyable. And my final pro of the game is that it does have those variable player powers. I really enjoy when games do this because it makes everybody a little bit different. It gives you something to shoot for that nobody else is going to try to do because that's not their ability. That's not their power. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not good for them to try to do what you're trying to do because they're not good at doing what you're trying to do. And I like that because it makes me different and it allows me to have a different experience with the game using these different abilities and powers that are out there. And then along with that, none of the powers are so powerful that they seem overbearing and unbeatable. Now there are some powerful ones out there. The hand of God is definitely powerful having a backstop out there, but you still have to be good at it because you can still flick it too hard and hit that backstop too hard and, and not stop where you want it to. So there's still skill that's involved, I guess you could say, but all of these different things are, are just uh, provide a little bit of a twist on how the game plays for that person. And I like it when variable player powers do that. My only real con for the game uh, would be having to do with the law cards or the council cards. Because generally speaking, they, they're going to affect either the entire game or just the current mission phase. They're not going to uh, be doing... Uh, any other, they're not going to affect any other part of the game. Now I realize we're only talking about three phases here, but uh, you get what I'm trying to say. Hopefully, I, I wish that there were, uh, I guess, a little bit more diversity in what the cards do than affecting just either this or that. Um, now I get that if it affects the entire game, you're in fact, you're, you're affecting the entire game. It's not just this or that, but that's not what I'm trying to say. I wish that there was, uh, you know, something else, you know, during the, not necessarily the mission phase, but over here during the, um, uh, council phase, uh, if you have this many people out there, then you can't vote or something like that, uh, whatever it might be. But I just wish that there were more opportunities to change the game here and there other than just the entire game or this current mission phase. I know that's a really weak con and quite frankly, yeah, I, uh, it is a weak con, but that's all I got for the con. So all in all, I think I'm going to give Flick of Faith a strong 8 out of 10. I really did enjoy this game. Uh, it plays quickly. It is um, uh, streamlined as far as what you're trying to do. Turns don't take a long time. There's virtually no downtime whatsoever. Everything about this game is something that I enjoy, except for the stickers. But I'm giving the stickers a pass um, because I get it, and, but I like all the nice chunky wood pieces too. Yeah, whatever. Eight out of 10 for me. Hope you uh, enjoy the review. Go check out Flick of Faith if you have the chance to do so. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Thanks for joining me here today. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.